All right, so today what we're working on is going to be the introduction to logarithms. As always, first video I do on these is going to be the ACT stuff. So 55. 55 is a question that you would probably expect 20% of the population to get right just based on the fact that the vast majority of students are going to guess. That's the truth. They're going to guess. Uh you know, it's about a memorization skill. You know, some of you have memorized that cosecant of something is one over sine. Some of you have. Some of you have. <clears throat> now, they talk about the period. Uh, you're actually supposed to learn things like this. Your geometry, your, you are. You're supposed to learn what these graphs look like. It's supposed to be done. It used to be done in Algebra 2 as well, and then it's done in pre-calc. Uh, so it's kind of a hard thing. I'm trying to think here since it's cosecant. And honestly, it's not appearing to me right now like it should, because I haven't done a graph of cosecant in quite some time. I'm going to do something a little funny here. I'm going to go to mode on a calculator. I'm going to put this thing in radians. That's another thing. The juniors this year, you don't know what a radian is. I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to type in, there's no cosecant button on a T84. There's what's called 1 over sine. That's all we have. Now, this was the sine of 4x, or the cosecant of 4x. I'm going to do a zoom 6, and I'm going to play with the window. And boy, that is an ugly looking graph now, isn't it? It's going to have a tiny, tiny period. Now what you're seeing is the same thing drawn over and over and over and over again. Looks to me like one full cycle is taking place here. And a cycle is where you start to repeat down, up, and then we're going to cycle again. So from here to about here, I'm going go to mode. I'm oh, sorry, not mode. I'm going to go to window. I'm going to set the x-min to be 0. I'm going to set the x-max to be pi. I'm going to set the scale to be something kind of funny like pi over 4. There she is. <sighs> this is a complete cycle or period of this graph. Now, Remember, I set this to be pi for x max. This would be half of that, which is pi over 2. I can do this again. But the thing is, I only see this, I see this initial cycling. So you're done drawing the graph of cosecant of 4x by the time you hit pi over 2, and then it repeats. And I, you know, that may not be clear exactly what's going on there. So let me get to where I can actually write on it. There's only a handful of kids I would expect that actually might remember what I did in a calculator. But maybe you do, maybe you don't. I don't know. So I set my x max to be pi. And that comes from, you know, I have a lot of prior experience with this. A whole lot. More than most. Took me a minute there. I had to find the right pen. I set this to be pi. This is zero pi. Halfway in between here would have to be a pi cut in half. And the cycling happens by the time you hit pi over two. So when you talk about the period or the cycle, it's simply pi over two, choice E. All right, at the school carnival, Mike will play a game in which he will toss a penny, a nickel, and a dime at the same time. He will be awarded three points for each coin that lands with the heads face up. Let the random variable x represent the total number of points awarded on any toss of the coins. What is the expected value of x? So when I glance at this, I think the answer is probably nine halves. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write out what we call a solution or a sample space. So 
So if I throw a penny, it could be a head or it could be a tail. That's, that's one outcome here, if I throw the penny. Uh, if I throw a dime, it could be a head or it could be a tail. And if I throw a nickel, which is what I should have said the first time, it could be a head or it could be a tail. Now, there could be lots of variations of this, but this is what we expect. 50-50, whether you win three points or not. And so if everything goes right, you get three plus three plus three equals nine points. And everything goes wrong, you get zero plus zero plus zero, which is zero points. Now, expected value is more or less the idea of an average. I should probably type that, seeing you got to read my chicken scratch. But expected value is the average that happens over time with just a ridiculous amount of plays. That's what it is. All right, the average that happens over time, over a large number of plays. And over a large number of plays, I would expect the heads and tails to be a 50-50 operation. But notice I said that keyword, it's the average. So I take nine, I add zero, then I cut it in half, and I get nine over two. Notice how they have that question written. The ACT is designed to be done without a calculator. So there you go, choice H. And, you know, this is the idea here, this sample space. Given a pause of 58, given a pause of integer n such that i to the n is 1, which of the following statements about n must be true? And they give you something. They give you something very, very important. They give you what i squared is. Note that i squared is negative 1. So it says when n is divided by 4, the remainder is 0. That's true. You know, you know that I, they tell you that i squared is negative 1. Well, here's the deal. i to the 4th would have to be an i squared, squared, which is going to be a negative 1 squared, which is 1. Now, you take that 4 right there, and you do what they say, 4 over 4, it is 1 with a remainder of 0. And that's the deal about i's. i to any power divisible by 4 is always 1. I don't know that I pushed that idea this year in Algebra 2 because i is not technically in the standards in the state of Tennessee. But that's the deal behind that one. So it's got to be choice F. And the ACT knows how the vast majority of teachers teach the imaginary concepts. They do a divide by four, throw away, keep only the remainder, which is how I teach it too. All right, the last one on this particular page. For negative pi over two, less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to pi over two, the absolute value of the sine of theta being greater or equal to 1 is true for all and only the values of theta in which the following sets. This is the set. It is an impossibility. Uh, <clears throat> if you think about Sokotoa, the thing that everybody learned the sine ratio is opposite over hypotenuse. So you put an angle in the corner, and opposite over hypotenuse is something small over the largest side of the triangle, and that cannot exceed one. It's impossible. It's just impossible. It is impossible for it to do it. You could also reinforce ideas by just looking at a graph, 
you have a TI-84 in front of you and you're saying, oh, what's the biggest output of the sine function? You can make sure that your calculator is in radian mode. Mode, radian. Zoom six that one. And here's the sine wave. Very, very important in your life, believe it or not. Not necessarily to you, but in the things that you possess and have. And you'll see that its highest value is one. Right there's one. Never exceeds one. Its lowest value is negative one. So there is no situation on this earth where the sine value ever exceeds one unless there's been some transformation of the function. There you go. Oddly enough, these are on order. Here's 57. Where for what positive real value of k, if any, is the determinant of the matrix that contains the elements k4, 3k equal to k? And note the determinant of the matrix that contains the elements a, b, c, d is equal to a, d minus b, c. So even those of you who are taught how to read with hooked on phonics have everything you need. Just do a lineup process. a is 4. I'm sorry, k is a, so k. So let's multiply it by D, which is going to be a K. K times K equal, or sorry, not equals. Minus, that's what I'm looking for, 3 times 4. And it must, is the determinant of the matrix K3, 4K equal to K. It must equal K. So there's your setup. K times K minus 3 times 4 must equal K. And, you know, k times k is k squared. We're going to take away 12. It's equal to k. Uh, I notice this is a quadratic. So I set it equal to 0. Do my little maneuvering here. k squared minus k minus 12 is a nothing. And then I factor, you know, your favorite skill of all time. Factors of 12 that add to negative 1 are probably going to be minus 4 and plus 3. Then I'm going to use the ZPP, zero product property, and I'll get that K is negative 3. Notice the sign change. Or K is 4, and again, notice the sign change. So the only value they have up there that actually works is the 4, because they didn't mention the negative 3. All right, number 60, a geometry problem, a class that most of my students passed. So maybe we'll have some success. A lot of times they'll tell you during ACT prep, you know, don't worry so much about the ones at the end, but there's some ones at the end that aren't that bad. You've just gotten scared of things like all the signs and the trig stuff because, you know, it's trig. But anyways, 60, ray PK bisects angle LPM, which you draw. Okay, you draw an angle. It doesn't necessarily have to be the correct drawing, but it's called L, P, M. Uh, the measure of angle LPM is 11x. So from here to here, we have a degree of separation of 11. Actually, I need to put that a little bit differently. I'm going to make it from here to here. We'll go pretty far out on my arc. That's 11x degrees. And something called PK cuts this thing in half. So there's P to K, and congruent segments are made. This is congruent to that. I'm going to use my congruency marks. The measure of L to P to K is 4X plus 18. Now, if L to P to K is 4X plus 18 because of bisecting, M to P to K has to be 4X plus 18. And if you put these two little angles together on the inside, they equal the entire angle. So there's my setup, 4X plus 18 plus 4X plus 18 must equal 11Xs. And this is such an easy thing. What's it got, like two, three steps? Now we're going to shift our 4Xs over to the right. 11 minus 8x is 3x, because 11 minus 4 is 7, minus 4 is 3, <clears throat> and 18 and 18 makes 36, and x is 12, and you'll notice that they have that there as a distractor. It is a distractor because they want KPM, and KPM is 4x plus 18. So 4 times 12 
plus 18. That's going to be 48 and 18, which is, I think, 66. Seems legit. You know, I just use push buttons if you don't have no idea what I did. Push buttons. I hope you don't have to, but 4 times 12 add 18 is 66 degrees. And that is the ACT. So let me stop this one, and then I'll start doing the stuff that I decided I would do on your actual homework.